Hello and uh, welcome to Making Biodiesel at Home. As mentioned in my previous film, I did say that I would uh, go on to make biodiesel. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll be running my HDI common rail, Citroen Relay, on my own biodiesel for well over two years now. I've done about 20, well, 18,000 miles and I've had no slip ups at all. The biodiesel that I've made has uh, has done me well, and that's using it in a common rail HDI engine, which is an engine which is under um, huge amounts of pressure. So the viscosity and the thickness of the biodiesel has got to be good, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident now in saying that if you go by what I'm gonna show you, you should be pretty good all the way. Okay, I'm just going to quickly go into the aspects of uh, health and safety, the boring parts. Um, with, with making biodiesel, there's going to be a mixture of uh, sodium hydroxide with methanol, which is going to make meth oxide, which is quite fumy and, uh, and abrasive. So what you're going to need is uh, a pair of rubber gloves, as so, um, preferably a long sleeved uh, shirt of some sort, long sleeves. Um, and also a well ventilated area because the meth oxide gas is pretty fumy and, uh, and strong to say the least. Also a pair of goggles or a pair of glasses should suffice, um, but goggles preferably. Okay, as far as legislation is concerned, making biodiesel at home, there isn't any. Um, well, there isn't here in the uh, UK or in Europe. Legislation states that you're okay to do that just as long as you don't store a lot of this methanol because methanol is extremely inflammable. If you are going to actually store it and uh, in huge quantities, then uh, yeah, you're gonna need a check up on your legislation, especially if you're gonna go on to making big batches for profit reasons. Okay, we'll move on to the method side of things, or should I say the ingredients. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna start with a small amount. I'm just going to make one litre of biodiesel. So with the ingredients I'm going to show you, you times that by the amount of biodiesel you want to make or the oil that you've got. So say if I was to make 20 bio, 20 litres sorry, of uh, oil that I want to convert into biodiesel, then I'll need to times the methanol and the sodium hydroxide by 20, by the amount of uh, liters of oil. Okay, so I'll go into uh, the amount you're going to need. Um, for one, okay, we've got one liter of normal cooked vegetable oil, which I get from um, a restaurant up the road for, for pittance. Um, so to that we're going to add 250 milliliters of methanol. Methanol is a little bit harder to get hold of, so you're probably going to have to check online and do a little bit of homework there. Sodium hydroxide, otherwise known as caustic soda, is relatively cheap. You can get this in most hardware stores or plumber centers, um, and uh, that is, it's, it's, it's cheap, it's cheap. I won't go into the prices because that's uh, just boring things up a bit. Um, so you're gonna need six grams of that. So we need to make the meth oxide from methanol and sodium hydroxide. So we'll get on and do that now. We'll add the sodium there. Now this is going to take a bit of stirring. <laughs> oh dear, nearly knocked over my oil there. But uh, anyway, let's get on and uh, get this a good mix. This takes a, a fair old bit of time to, to dissolve. So uh, it will take about 10, 10 minutes to, to dissolve. And uh, as you can see, I'm just using a chopstick. And uh, I can actually say I know how to use chopsticks now <laughs> in my own way. But uh, we'll just keep going with that until, until it's dissolved. There is a reaction that takes place betwe between the actual uh, sodium hydroxide and the methanol. And what you'll find is that the actual vessel that you're mixing it in will start to heat up as it is starting to. Once that is dissolved, then we will add the meth oxide to the oil. Now the oil, when I get that back from the restaurant, um, I'll generally, uh, if it's a warm day, then I don't need to heat it up. 
but generally I'll, I'll heat it up just to loosen up the, uh, the oil and then what I'll do is pour it into a, a container, a holding container, um, and I'll pour that oil through a neck curtain. This is just to filter all the bits and bobs that we don't want in the oil when it comes to actually processing bits of food, bits of little bits of fat and lard um, and the like. So uh, that's pretty important to do that. Okay, yeah, that's reacting nicely. What I've also done is I've heated the oil up now when it comes to actually mixing the uh, the ingredients together I'll get the oil up to about 60 degrees Celsius no higher than that because if you go any higher than that when you do introduce the methoxide you'll get a reaction and you'll get bits splashing on and splattering all over the place so you, you, you want to avoid that so get it up to 60 degrees C no no higher than that um, also the methoxide will also get up to the same temperature about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius so when we do introduce the two there's no there's no reaction in temperatures and you won't get any uh, any spillages also at that temperature it really does allow the the uh, the molecules of the oil to open up and it allows the methoxide to get in there and uh, and do its bit so I think that's about that's what I'll look Okay, there's some there's some bits there, and as you can see, it's uh, it's changed colour as you'd expect, and um, yeah, we're getting there. Just bear with me. <clears throat> I'll try and fill in the uh, the space with a bit of talk. Um, like I said, I have been using my own biodiesel for a couple of years now and uh, I've got up to 18,000 miles um, using my own biodiesel. One thing I uh, must say while this is dissolving is mixes. Um, when you first start to use biodiesel I think it's, it, it is important to change your fuel filter. Um, as the biodiesel is so clean and it really does uh, it will clean the system through thoroughly and um, your oil sorry your, your fuel lines will will be cleaned and uh, what's going to happen is a lot of the uh, the uh, elements from normal road diesel will come away from your fuel lines and uh, and catch up in your filter now what I'll do about six months later I will change the fuel filter again to a clean filter and uh, from then onwards everything's uh, hunky-dory. As far as mixtures are concerned during the winter time I will actually go with um, a 75% biodiesel mix to a 25% road diesel mix. With sub-zero temperatures then I will go with a 50-50 um, mix but during the summertime, anything over 10 degrees Celsius, then I will go with a 100% mix, but I don't. I actually add 20% um, road diesel to 80% um, uh, biodiesel as an insurance, just to keep the vis viscosity down. Now, I've run my engine on 100% of this stuff, and it hasn't had a problem. I only do that as an insurance to keep that viscosity down, no matter what because it's the viscosity that's important really um, as we want that to pass through the jets in a common rail engine the actual amount of pressure that's um, injected in to the combustion chamber is extremely large so uh, the fuel's got to be thin and I'm glad to say it is right that's all dissolved and now what we're going to do is actually introduce the methoxide so here we go oh yeah as you'd expect we're getting a nice reaction straight away you'll probably see this change color um, from well this oil is relatively dirty I can say um, for sure so this methoxide is 
going to get in there and uh, clean it up. Now what's going to happen is through this process, you can probably see it changing colour now, it's actually gone a bit lighter than it did. Um, usually with very clean oil it will go darker but with, um, with dirty oil it actually goes lighter then goes dark again. What will happen is the methoxide will actually get in there and clean out all the amino acids and uh, all the fats and other things that we don't want and with itself it will actually fall to the bottom as methanol is water based and as we all know water and oil do not mix so what happens is we get separation now the separation will occur you'll see about 25 percent of um oh my word there goes the watch which tells me it's about time i got the rice on <laughs> anyway that's another story i can uh, i can wait um so 25 percent of the bottom which will darken will be glycerin or glycerol um, that's a byproduct from the actual biodiesel I'll show you a bit later on um, in fact I'll show you uh, one in a minute so what we'll do is just keep stirring that for a good 10-15 minutes whilst I'm doing that I will show you the separation this is after 24 hours it's best really to uh, separate the, the biodiesel as you can see now we've got the biodiesel um, and there's the glycerin glycerol which what we'll do is actually pour the oil off and get rid of that or get, supply it to uh, um, a person who makes their own industrial soaps because you can actually make um, industri industrial soaps from uh, the glycerin um, okay well that's that's the process and what I'll do is uh, mix that as I said for 10, 15, 20 minutes um, okay we'll just let that do its bit for us but we'll go back to the one that I made before as you can see now there is the biodiesel I've left that a little bit too long um, don't leave the uh, don't leave it to stand too long about I usually let it stand overnight um, and this is this is the color this is this is what you're looking for and the glycerin down the bottom will actually harden if you leave it for too long and it's a bit of a swine to 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 get out of the container so once you've done it once you've left it over overnight get it separated and uh, you won't have problems with the glycerin as that will harden if you leave it for too long next process will be actually washing the biodiesel okay we've got the biodiesel there but the fact is there's still traces of uh, um, methoxide in there so we need to clean that and to clean that we're going to wash it wash it with water and uh, what I'll do is I'll make a, another video on uh, cleaning washing and containing your biodiesel once you've made it okay well so any comments or anything that you think I might need to know um, because I'll appreciate any hints, handy hints that you may have if you do make your own biodiesel, then please uh, leave a comment. As for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rice sorted out before it actually starts burning and um, I'll make a part two on the cleaning of biodiesel. Thanks for joining me and I hope that this phase of making the biodiesel has uh, given you an insight and uh, allows you to take something away with you. Okay, thanks for joining me and uh, ciao for now. See you in part two. Ciao.